Hey everyone, this is uh, me, Dennis, again. Sorry, so we're, we're 13 minutes over stream. Uh, we're not able to get our YouTube stream working, unfortunately, so we are just gonna end up just recording our stream and then uploading it to YouTube after. Sorry about that, everyone, but okay, we're gonna go ahead and start the stream now. Okay! Okay then, sorry about the delay everyone, but YouTube said no. So <laughs> we're just gonna be going with uh, our Instagram and our Facebook stream. Just can't connect to YouTube, don't know why. Sorry about that everyone. Okay, so this stream, we are going to be talking about nozzle size, so more, we're going to cover what it's like to have a different size nozzle on the printer. So currently on the printer right now, we got a five millimeter nozzle. So as you can see here, and in, uh, for you people on Instagram, we actually have a second camera right here. Uh, so if you want to see a close up shot of the stuff, you can go to our Facebook stream. We're not streaming on YouTube right now. Apologize about that. But we have two different size nozzles. So right now we have a five mil on and we're going to put an eight mil on. And what we're gonna do is we're going to run the exact same G-code file. So we're going to uh, print a basic cylinder, just super basic object. And then we will uh, switch nozzles to an eight mil running the same G-code file. And it will severely under extrude. And I'm gonna show you ways on how that can be fixed and what actually should be done the correct way to do this. So let's actually go ahead and start this five mil print so we can see how it looks like. So here I'm gonna go to our uh, printer interface. Let me just make sure we uh, got the right thing going on. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so we're gonna go to our, ooh, not that one, not, we're not looking at Kira, sorry. There we go. So here we can go ahead and just stop this print. We're just gonna hit pause print on this and cancel print. Back. And on our printer interface here, we're gonna run the prime program. Do, 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 do. I was cleaning the nozzle a little bit here. And play is coming out now. So I just turned the power in the machine off and on again, or you can hit the emergency stop button in the top right of the interface to do the same thing. So let's uh, go back to shop front. Sorry about that. Yeah, so we just did a prime here and got the clay out of there. And let's run the basic cylinder so this is a cylinder and in kira this cylinder was is for uh five millimeter nozzle settings in kira we have a five millimeter nozzle on the printer and we're going to be printing at 30 millimeters per second on the speed with a layer height of 1.5 millimeters and that is pretty much the super base standard uh for our printers, like what we recommend of everything. Okay, so I'm gonna help make sure the nozzle height's correct here. So I'm gonna move the extruder down a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of water here to the print bed to help it along just a little bit.
Okay, now it's doing the first layer of the big cylinder here. And helping it along like this with hand for the first layer always just lets you get some good adhesion. Being quite messy here and it's it's flowering out quite a bit here, but that is only because the uh, the nozzle was basically nearly scraping on the print bed there. So I lowered it just a little bit too low. There we go. Okay, so I'm not gonna let this print complete all the way. It'll take a little too long, but this is pretty much the standard of what I said. So we have a five mil nozzle printing at 30 millimeters per second and a layer height of 1.5 uh, millimeters per layer height. So every revolution, it goes up 1.5 millimeters. And that is pretty as good as we could, the best default thing we could get. I'm gonna double check on something real quick. Sorry for the little interruption. So for this, we are going to go ahead and stop this print. I'm actually gonna try and get a super close up here. Uh, so for the people on Facebook stream watching, you can get a super close up view of what this looks like here. Put a little zoom in camera here. And there's no, uh, what's the correct terminology here? Uh, under extrusion here, all the layers are pushed together very closely. So we're going to cha now change the nozzle size up to eight millimeters. And we're not going to change other, other extrusion settings. We're just going to let the same flow rate from the extruder work with an eight mil nozzle now. So to do that, we're actually going to go to the interface here. So I'll show what the screen looks like here. And we're going to hit pause print and cancel print. And on the printer, it is canceling the print. Oh, there it is, little scraper here. And this clay can be reused and uh, if it's clean and you can put that back into your pug mill or hand loader. Okay, so now we're gonna do a nozzle change and we're gonna change the nozzle here. We're just gonna loosen the set screws a little bit. And we're gonna pull the nozzle out. And if you're unable to pull the nozzle out, then we could actually just run the prime program for just a moment. Let me make sure these, these screws are loose. Okay, and we'll try first by hand, but it's coming a little bit. Yeah, there we go. We got it by hand. Spinning it. There we go. Oh, a little airtight seal almost there. And we're gonna be switching this nozzle for this nozzle. So I'll get a little close up for people on Instagram. There you go, so we're increasing it from five mil up to eight mil now. <laughs> okay, and then every little couple extra people in the background there. <laughs> Yes? Oh, they don't know I'm streaming. Would you like, you guys want to come over and be in the stream? <laughs> but now we have an eight mil nozzle on and we are going to run the exact same program. So it's going to be really under extruding now. So we're going to go to jobs and run same five mil nozzle, do, 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 do. All I did on the interface there is I just clicked to start the same file, so it wasn't anything spectacularly different.
Again, for the dudes on Instagram, thank you if you're watching us on Instagram. If you'd like to see the close-up shot of this, we have a second camera here zoomed in, uh, which you can view on Facebook. But right now, it's uh, can't stream on YouTube because I don't know why. Sorry. It, uh, we'll fix that for next stream. And in fact, we actually need to prime it. So because I put on a fresh nozzle here, ooh, no, it did, it did prime it just in time. Excellent. So let's go ahead and lower this back down because we have a different nozzle size. So we changed the height of the system. So we're using the exact same G code, but with a big nozzle. So uh, maybe it will be just barely enough extrusion. Maybe it'll start stringing out, but let's see what happens here. So I'm already, I'm going to try and help it along as best I can here by hand. Let's even give it some little booster help here, adding some of the clay from before, trying to make this happen. But this is going to be severely under extruded, so I'm not quite sure this is going to end up working. Maybe just barely, but there'll be some cracks in the clay. Ooh, no, see? Already pushing up clay where it's not supposed to be. But again, just remember guys, you know, this is sliced for a five mil nozzle and we're printing with an eight millimeter nozzle. So under extrusion is going to happen for sure here. It's not even sticking to the bed very well. I'll add a little bit more clay there. Okay, so let's see how this goes. So now that's oh, yo, 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 little peel up there. <laughs> okay, so what I wanted to show was this. So it's almost kind of like it's dripping. It's acting like drip, 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 and it's coming out in clumps because it adheres a little bit and then it pulls it and then it adheres a little bit and then it pulls it. So that's big under extrusion. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to try and continue with this print, but in the printer interface, we are going to up the extrusion by a hundred percent. So now through manual in the interface, I've increased the extrusion. It'll go all the way to 250% because I think I did the calculation. That's should be about what it is. So now I just increased the extrude rate to 250% for an eight mil nozzle. And it looks like that's about right. So even though we are running with uh, the eight mil nozzle on five millimeter nozzle G code, we're able to actually run this print because in the interface, you have an extrusion control slider to increase the speed of the print. And it looks like 250, maybe even a little bit too much. So let's bring that back down to 200%. So that looks about right. So for, at least for this particular print, uh, I've already said it quite a few times, <laughs> but we're now on 200% extrusion rate with five millimeter nozzle settings. And now it's actually able to print, as you can see. So, you know, at the start, I was having to help it along so much. And it was, there was not enough clay coming out for the layers to adhere together correctly. And while that printed perfectly with the five millimeter nozzle, it printed horribly with the eight millimeter nozzle. There just wasn't enough clay. So now that's actually working pretty good. So let's go ahead and stop this print. So now we're going to run the same shape as we just did, but in Cura, the sl slicing software we use to make this G code, uh, I'm going to run a different G code file, the same shape, but in Cura, I had changed the nozzle size and the wall width to eight millimeters to this nozzle size. And I left the flow rate at the same flow rate. So Cura compensates for that. If you put a bigger nozzle size on Cura, it'll put more clay out. So let's go ahead and run that file. So 
this file is do 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 stream same setting so same layer height same speed but i've changed the nozzle size in kira and the wall width in kira so let's see how this object comes out now with an eight millimeter nozzle and i will reset the extrusion rate and the speed rate in the interface so the interface is now back to 100 100 percent on both speed and extrusion And we're going to see how this turns out now. Need some water here. It's not sticking too well at all. So that flow rate looks much better already, just even on the outline alone. Even flowering out a little bit here, just a little bit of flowering. Oh, I just moved that big clay chunk out of the way there. Okay, so just assisting the first layer. You see, it's it's adhering much better with just a little bit of water. It's adhering much better to the uh, to the plate here. And in fact, this extrusion rate might even be a little bit too much. I might even have to lower it a little bit. So I might even go into the interface and lower the extrusion speed. Not the print speed, but the extrusion speed. So when you're inspecting the, the, the individual layers, it's very good to see how much they're mushing into each other. And that will tell you what your extrusion rate should be. So I'm looking at the previous layer and how much it's being kind of pushed out of the way. And it actually doesn't look like it's being pushed that much at all. So actually that's quite, quite a very good extrusion rate. Uh, but a layer height of 1.5 millimeters, which is what we're doing the same layer height, it looks like it should be even bigger. So maybe for an eight millimeter nozzle, each layer height should be two millimeters. For the purposes of extrusion rates and this stream, we're keeping that factor at the same so I can show you the differences between nozzles and keeping the G-code the same. But for an eight millimeter nozzle, we would generally want to increase the layer height even more. That actually looks very good. So it looks like Kira did an excellent job there by changing the nozzle size and the wall width setting in Kira. That extrusion rate looks perfect. But in terms of an actual pottery piece, like I said, the layer height looks too short. So I would, I would almost want to increase that in, in Kira as well. And that in turn would also increase the flow rate and increasing the layer height. Slicers automatically compensate for that. So increasing the layer height would increase the flow rate as well. So also here in the interface, uh, I'll bring this up on screen for you guys to see where those sliders were. So here on the right side on the interface where you can see the speed factor. So you can use our these little plus and minus controls or you can actually just drag the slider back and forth to your preferred setting. And there's a nice little reset button there so you can get back to 100% if you want. And then here's the extrusion slider. And as you can see, it's right at 100%. We're printing the same object with the other G-code file. So I made a few files here for the stream. And as you can see, here's the, the first one we printed. We printed uh, the five millimeter nozzle with 1.5 millimeter layer height at 30 millimeters per second. And now we're printing this file, the eight millimeter nozzle settings with the same layer height and same speed. And what I sort of pseudo did is uh, when I was trying to print this file, the five mil with an eight millimeter nozzle, I just dragged the extrude rate all the way up to two, like 200% here. And that also kind of made a, the same result. So it's up to you, you know, uh, it is more convenient in my opinion to, uh, let me switch back here to the printer so you can go ahead and see that. It is more convenient in, and you get way more control if you're changing nozzle sizes and flow rates in your slicer. Uh, editing them in the interface, in our interface and changing sliders live, it's very uh, temporary. It's not a permanent thing and you have to kind of remember, oh, that file prints good at 
150% extrusion rate. You can do that, that is completely fine. But if you want to kind of almost set it and forget it, well, except for the start, because you have to help it along at the start just a little bit, make sure it's working. But here, you know, the settings at 100% on speed and 100% on flow rate. And this file is printing beautifully because we changed the nozzle size in Kira for this nozzle, for this file. Go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and check and see if you guys have any questions uh, for the stream. So let me just ask my person back there. Apparently, oh, wait, we got a question. What is the ratio between nozzle size and extrusion rate? So uh, let me answer that question in relation to that. So. Uh, for a bigger nozzle, you need more extrusion because just it's just a wider. So let's say I'm moving at 30 millimeters per second, about this speed, which is what the printer is moving at right now. If you have a wider nozzle, you need to have more flow rate because you're covering the same amount of surface. It's like the surface area of a circle. So if I'm putting material on a piece of paper like this or on, on the bat, I need way more extrusion if the circle's small, because the diameter and surface area of the circle is smaller. So less material, more material. And that's what this whole demonstration is about. Uh, if you're watching uh, on Instagram, we have a little text in the top left. Normally on YouTube and Facebook, we're only streaming on Facebook right now because YouTube server said no, and I tried to get it working for 12 minutes and then I gave up. So we are recording this stream and we will be putting it on YouTube. So I just, we'll be uploading this to YouTube as a video <laughs> instead of a live stream, unfortunately. But this will be archived on YouTube to watch later if you wish to do so. Oh, a little air bubble, a little pop, it's okay. Uh, but hey, we are accepting files. If you got print files, you got cool stuff, not a little air bubble. Uh, some cool files to send us. Send us an STL file and we'll print it on stream. So, you know, we'll slice it up on stream and show how we do it. So send us some files and send them to an e our email at stream at 3dpotter.com. Send us STL files to stream at 3dpotter.com and we'll show slicing it up and if the file's too complicated we'll explain why we can't print it or maybe we'll just try and print it anyway even if it's not printable just to show what it looks like <laughs> uh, for complex files uh, if you want to get advanced on that just know that make a file for us that you don't need retraction for and if you don't know what that means just send us a file anyway a dot a model file an stl file don't send us g-code files Give us a model file, and sending us a model file gives us the rights to it. You, you don't go. You don't go to keep your disclaimer. Sending us a file means we share rights on it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so, if you got any more questions, we'll stream for another few minutes here. If you got any more questions for us, uh, do you, sir, in the background, the the gallery, have any comments? Yes, we talked about that. He said a uh, larger. Nozzle size means larger layer height. Yes, indeed. So we're just doing the same layer height for this demonstration purposes of extrusion rate, but for a better piece, it, you may want to increase the layer height, or if you like a more smooth look like this, you can keep it small layer height. Sure, another couple questions. What's the smallest nozzle that can be used on our printer? Uh, reliably, a three millimeter nozzle. You can go smaller, but a two millimeter nozzle uh, for porcelain would be good, but you can't have any particles. So if you have a particle that's bigger than two millimeters, like in grog, so if you have abrasives mixed in, it has to be smaller than the nozzle diameter. So more liquidy porcelain can go at two millimeters or even one millimeter. Another question? What's the uh, procedure to get the machine prepared to actually print and the uh, clay prep procedure? We have tons of video on YouTube explaining this, but I'll give you a brief overview now. Uh, basically, uh, if you have a, a hand loader, other people call it different terms, but uh, 
if to a die set, you know, normally to a plunger to push clay through dies, you can load our tubes that way. So you attach our tube to that or put our tube on the end of a pug mill. And as long as the mixture of clay is correct, you just fill the tube and then put it onto this extruder and go right ahead. Water content is about 25%. And another way to say that would be if you have a prepared bag of clay, you put about 10 ounces of water into it. So you want a paste-like consistency for the clay. Hard clay, you can't put clay that's too, too dry. So obviously dry clay would be no. But yeah, so we have a bunch of videos that show uh, what kind of clay goes in our tubes and how to do clay prep. That's on our tech support channel at 3D Potter YouTube. Uh, YouTube. 3D Potter Tech Support has all of our videos that show the technical side, not the beautiful side, but the technical side of actually how to use the machine. So here's a little shot up of the clay. Another question? Sure. What was, what was the first part of the question? It's nozzles. So the nozzles are anodized aluminum. The question was what kind of materials do we use for the nozzles if they're uh, steel or if we can, if you can use copper for the nozzles. So it's it dependent on your material. So we have anodized aluminum. We provide them free with every purchase of our printer and extruders. And you can also just buy them separately if you wish on our website for custom sizes as well. But you know, some clays and mixtures, they have very bad corro corrosive materials in them. You know, some people put whatever is required, you know, the, the, it's too broad a range, you know, it's, you can put anything in our tubes and anything that would react badly with aluminum would be not good for our printers. But, you know, we don't make copper nozzles and we don't make steel nozzles. We, uh, uh, aluminum that is anodized and coated with a cute little color. This is like a little brass color here. Any more questions right now? Okay. No more questions right now. So couple more minutes and uh, we'll end the stream in just a little bit. Ooh. No more questions coming through, so we'll go ahead and end the stream. Sorry, I'm sorry again, guys, everyone. Stream was started about 12, 13 minutes late. We're trying to get to YouTube. I tried everything, tried restream. It made the event on YouTube, but just said uh, starting stream and YouTube's, YouTube said, the stream will start when you start streaming to me. But I was streaming to YouTube and I did have all the stream keys set correctly. It just didn't. Yeah. Sorry about that. Excuses. Here, you wanna play catch? Oh. Here, you want, you want to play catch? Here, 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 come over here. Oh! She hit me in the face. You see that? Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next uh, two, two weeks. Send us your STL files to our email, stream at 3dpotter.com. If you send us a cool file, we'll try printing it on stream. Please. Please. The email box is very lonely. Bye, guys. See you guys in uh, two weeks. Or next, not next week, two weeks. Every, every, every other. Uh, I don't know how to end a stream. This is the end of a stream. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>